Oh, are we on the air? Hey gang, it's Brian from FX Billiards. Today we are going to analyze the play of one of our viewers. His name is Marcus. Uh, before I get into it, I just want to make a point. Uh, if you have a video that you're interested in me analyzing your game, uh, send it to me and uh, you can reach me at fxbilliards at gmail.com. Uh, as long as it's of good quality, we will analyze your game and put it on the channel. Now, first thing you should know about Marcus is he is a very solid player. Uh, he's going to make quick runs on these uh, two racks of nine ball, but let's discuss things that he can look at changing or improving on. Now, he has an extremely good understanding of position play, and uh, you can tell just running off these balls how easy he makes it look. He understands position play very well. He has good uh, fundamentals good cue ball control, good speed, uh, just about everything that you need to be a solid player he possesses. The only things that I could see uh, some coaches would work on with Marcus is the speed in which he shoots, uh, his warm-up strokes and his backswing and a lot of different things uh, happen very quickly and I know a lot of coaches want you to slow down, uh, they want you to pause on your backstroke I wouldn't recommend Marcus change any of these things at all because he has become uh, pretty proficient in shooting the way it uh, feels comfortable for him. So it's important to all of you players, don't let anybody change your stroke, your stance, as long as you are having success. Now if things break down, that's when you start looking at, uh, I need you to change your stroke, I need you to, to pause, I need you to slow down. And my one word of advice to Marcus would be if you start having trouble pocketing balls you really should look at the speed in which you're approaching the ball and shooting those balls off. Other than that, which doesn't seem to be a problem right now, the one thing that I did talk to Marcus about was the fact that he plays such good position that very often he is abandoning the idea of shooting good patterns. So what I mean by that is, uh, well, let's pause for a second and look at his break. He breaks from inside the box, makes that wing ball consistently, and when he doesn't, um, well, I haven't seen him miss the wing ball, but he also sends that one ball to the side pocket. So he's got a very good cut break, uh, which is key. So back to the pattern play. When you don't have good patterns, but you have good position, you end up putting yourself in what could be a difficult situation down the road. So as you'll notice, he can get from one ball to the other anywhere on the table and the, the balls are spread out pretty well. But what pattern play does is it helps you avoid some obstacles. Uh, for example, getting too close to that three ball. You'll notice that in both of these racks, the previous rack and this rack, he leaves himself a difficult position on the nine ball. And in each case, it's not a matter of him not being able to play good position. It's a matter of him not paying close enough attention to the pattern. So here you see he knew how to get on that six ball, but I'm not sure it occurred to him that that seven ball is at the opposite end of the table. So it would help you to be shooting towards the camera in this case on that six ball as opposed to going from one end of the table to the next because you can see he's on the rail here for the seven ball shot. So as good as he is at playing position, if you play good patterns on top of that position, then you don't end up situate with situations like this where you have a back cut on the nine ball or you're shooting the seven ball from the rail. So the fact that he's a very good position player and a good shot maker really bails him out in a number of different situations. So I just wanted to draw that to your attention. The one thing that I did recommend that he work on with his game was addressing patterns a little bit more deliberately. So because both of those runs ran by so quick, he ran two racks in four minutes, 
I'm going to show you the first rack all over again and then we'll actually look at the second rack as well. So here you, shoot, you see he shoots a nice follow shot on the two ball, gives himself some space on the three ball. Now if you notice what he does here, he draws this back to get on the four ball, which is fine. The seven ball comes into play because uh, it actually stops the object ball, I mean the cue ball. I'm not sure if that was intentional or not, but he gets on the five. I think I said the four, but he gets on the five. He's playing the six here. And again, he has a great understanding of English. You see he put uh, right hand English on that to run around the table. And there, that was the instant that he had an opportunity to get a better angle on his eight ball so he's not crossing the line of this nine ball. Because he's going around the table, he gets in a position where he's passing the nine as opposed to moving into the nine. And what he could have done if he was more conscious of his patterns, starting with the seven, he could have gotten a better angle on the eight and had an easier shot on the nine. So as he racks, I want you guys to pay close attention to his break because he has a very good break. He's, he's breaking from inside the box. For those of you who don't know, that means you're behind the head string, but you're, you have to break within the first and third diamond. So you can't put the cue ball on the edge and shoot it from the rail. Now this is not the preferred break, but it is a break that is common in some leagues where you have to break from inside the box. So whether he does it intentionally or uh, out of habit, uh, either way, he has a very good break. He's probably hitting those, I, I would say, 50 to 60 percent of his full power. And you can see he makes that wing ball automatically. And um, that wing ball for most of you, whether it's a cut break like this or a, um, a rail break, you should be making that wing ball on a regular basis, uh, probably in the area, for, for amateur players, probably in the area of 70, 75%. And if you check out my video on, um, on breaks, which is under five must-have pool shots, uh, number 20, you'll learn both of these breaks, the cut break and the rail break for nine ball. So you see he got a little, a little close on that three ball, but again, because he's such a good position player, he doesn't seem to be worried about patterns at all. He just knows he's going to get from the 4 to the 5, from the 5 to the 6. But the key here is if I had to play that 5 ball and get position on that 6, I would have been thinking ahead of time, I want to be shooting down this direction on that 6 ball so I don't have to do anything fancy to get on the 7. Because this could have ended tragically. He could have ended up scratching. Uh, he could have ended up on the rail like he did and not been such a good shot maker. And now he's got to pull a rabbit out of his head to get position on the nine ball. So it all goes back to position as early as the five ball to run a pattern that is going to get you on this ball. So the goal as far as pattern play is to be so good at setting up the patterns that you don't have to be good at being a great shot maker or uh, controlling English around the table. If you have good patterns, you can eliminate some of those obstacles. So hit me in the comments, guys. Make sure you thank Marcus for sharing his video with us. And if you have a video you want to submit to me, hit me at fxbilliards at gmail.com. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Have a great day.